Hello people, this is Zippy and welcome to my classroom. Today I'll be talking about classroom management. Yes, classroom management 101, which is something that very many teachers struggle with. I have struggled with it for a couple of years and if you're a new teacher please stay tuned because it might help you save you know a lot of stress a lot of heartache and you know just unnecessary drama so first thing i would say is set clear boundaries and expectations and this is something you hear all the time but make sure you communicate them because once you set that clear boundary the students need to know that in my class no one comes in more than five minutes late and there are consequences and you must follow through on these consequences so if the consequence is you will have after school detention or you will have extra homework or any whatever you've decided um please follow through and the moment they know you know that this has been set and especially for a new teacher they will really try and see if this is actually something you're going to you know actually follow through or not okay so be very very strict on that once they see that this teacher actually has boundaries they will not walk all over you they will not use you as a doormat they will respect you and once your classroom is under control you're able to teach you're able to you know meet your objectives the other thing i'll say is be interested in your students um there's you know this humane aspect to a teacher that students would love to see they just don't want to see somebody who comes starts writing on the board and you know sets the ball rolling and that's it they go away um, or they students now the students themselves go away they would like to see you know uh, a father figure a mother figure and being interested in the students would be you know it's a monday morning uh, you see a student looking very gloomy you say hey how are you what's wrong are you okay um and then see where the conversation takes you um and they don't have to be gloomy you could just ask Hi class, how was your weekend? And from that, the mood that you get, you can easily tell, okay, people are okay, I can't start teaching, people are not okay, I need to work on, you know, one, two, three, before I can delve into my, you know, my topic or my concept. Okay, so please be interested, show this other aspect to you. And what this does to the students, you know, they look at the teacher, especially if it's a new teacher, look at you like, oh, wait a minute, they're not as horrible as I thought, you know, and, you know, they might be comparing you to their previous teacher, and the moment they see that you're actually interested in them, they also start getting interested in what you have to tell them, okay? So, a very, very, very important thing to do. The next thing I'll say is, set a good example be the role model um, i will not expect something from my, my students that I'm, i myself am not showing if my students are allowed phones in school and in my class i tell them no one is allowed to use a phone yet i am the one constantly you know scrolling texting picking calls in my class then what am I doing? I'm not going to have a class because the students will do the same. Uh, if I'm the one coming to class late and here I am complaining about tardiness, then my students will not reciprocate. So set a good example. Be that person that students say, you know, even miss does not do this. Why are you the one doing it? Okay. They, in, you know, in their retrospect, they will always try and imitate the teacher and if the teacher is setting a bad example they will definitely give that back the energy you give is the energy you get so please set a great example and then you will not be surprised if the students are doing good because you have shown them the way 
but not just uh, telling them, okay? Another thing that is not natural to everybody, but it's something that we can learn, is to have routines. And you hear this a lot, you know, especially when you're training as a teacher, you always hear, you know, have your classroom routine. But what does that entail? Classroom routine would be, I'll give you mine as a teacher, my classroom routine, the moment my students come into my class, the first thing is, of course, we say hi. The next thing they know automatically is homework. Um, so which home learning tasks did I give you? And they'll put their homework book on the table and they know they have their course outline. They know what topic we're learning that day. Um, and so they automatically take out their books. I should not see bags on the desks. I need to see books. I need to see what you're doing. They know the next thing is to write the topic and the date on the exercise book. And you know, they'll quickly, you'll hear the, the very active ones asking, um, Miss, the first thing, it's it's a listening exercise. So, you know, are we writing A, B, C, D, are we writing one, two, three? And, and it's it just makes your work very easy because you move very quickly uh, once you have routines rather than you you know come to a class they don't know whether do we give the teacher homework before you know do we give the teacher homework at the end of the lesson do we give the teacher you know on tuesday before assembly i don't know just uh, have a routine and the routine will take less than five minutes because you know they're coming in they're giving you your books they're doing their work, the, you know, in, in, in a very, very quick, uh, very short span of time, you'll have accomplished so much. And the thing is, um, especially for new teachers, you need to be able to complete that content if your lesson is 40 minutes long or if it's one hour long. You cannot have a scenario where you're wasting 10, 15 minutes having the students coming down to settle and doing ABCD and you're left with about 15 minutes of contact time, no teaching time is wasted. So please have a routine and you'll see how far it's going to take you. I would also advise you to separate yourself from anger. We are all human. We get agitated, we get annoyed. And students can push you to the edge, especially if you teach teenagers. They have a way of, you know, yes but the moment you start feeling your anger boiling and just coming up please separate yourself move on to another activity move on to another student leave that scenario because if you don't take care of that it might explode into you know something that might make you lose your job if you are very temperamental um you you need to be the adult do not start you know banging on the desk do not um, threaten the student do not fight with you know you've seen um, online videos where teachers and students are fighting and these things do actually happen so separate yourself from that anger um, do not let it take over you because like I said you are the adult you have to put yourself above the scenario and then deal with that issue later once your anger has gone down okay and if need be, let somebody else take care of that. Let someone else handle it for you if you know this is something that's just going to push you to a place of no return. Another thing is be prepared. Um, when students see that the teacher is not prepared, um, the teacher is wasting time, the teacher is looking for their material, the teacher is busy doing this and that, what do they do to fill up that space? They will make noise. They will start throwing paper at each other. The, this one will start pinching this one. This one will remove a thumbtack from the board. And, you know, all manner of things will happen. But if you're prepared, you're organized, you know what you're teaching, you know it's this material to the next, to the next, nothing is going to make students waste time. Keep them on task. Um, what do I mean by keep them on task? Make sure that there's none who's idle and if you have a, a very gifted student you know a student who does their work very quickly and they move on give them more challenging tasks so that as maybe you know the other students are still finishing up on something 
this other one is not going to be mischievous they're, they're also occupied okay so be be organized be always just be prepared um, if you start leaving your students to go to the staff room and pick stuff uh, you left your book you have to go back and get something else you don't have a whiteboard marker or a chalk or, or whatever you start leaving students alone what happens they will find something to do okay so organize yourself and you'll hear the students saying ah that teacher is never organized that teacher comes to class without anything that teacher blah 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 and then see what happens if someone who's organized can get students to do um, several tasks and meet their three objectives of that day you know how come there's someone else who's not able to meet even a single you know learning outcome so let's let's work on on, on that um, plan yourself prepare your content before going to class and you you'll be surprised at how quickly things go and how much students will respect you because I know wow this one was ready to teach positive reinforcement positive reinforcement could be you know in form of the rewards that you give the students but also just positive feedback and saying wow you've improved today good job Wow, um, so and so, you're only two minutes late to my class. That's great improvement. Keep it up. Like, wow, well, you've moved from a C to a B. Good job. You know, keep giving them great words. And when you're giving them criticism, just make sure it's positively done. And remember, it's not always what you say, it's how you say it. You can say, um, I, in, in school, I used to have a teacher who used to call me my daughter. And the moment he tells me, my daughter, you're doing so well here. But on this side, I think you can do this. You know, everything stopped at my daughter. The moment I felt validated, I felt, wow. You know, like he has moved from just me being his student, but he's seen me as a daughter. So he really wants the best for me. It, it just makes everything objective, okay? Um never ever ever be subjective we are not we are not after the student we are after their performance we are looking at their behavior okay if you are telling them uh, i think you would do better in this and that rather than you know following this other path that i see you taking they'll see that this teacher is actually there for me and there's nothing as much um, that is as important as showing the children that you actually care about them and like I said in a previous episode most of these children just want attention they want to be heard by someone so it could be also in the form of rewards you have some sweets um, you have I don't know it depends on your pizza um, even just uh, smiley faces on the book or um, stickers um, i have these little stamps you know that i stamp on my students books or their exam paper just saying oh very good or great improvement or your that's a beautiful handwriting or and they are so eager and you'll see like my year 10 class uh, have wonderful girls and if they don't get a stamp uh, miss miss why didn't i get this or if I wrote um, sehr gut, which is very good in German, instead of wunderbar, which is wonderful, like Miss, why didn't I get a wunderbar? Why did I just get a sehr gut? Um, and and it just it makes them work really hard. I make sure everything is just neatly done, and it just makes my classroom a happy classroom, and I'm able to manage them better. Also, being creative works. In your classroom just be creative if you see that the teaching method you're employing is not working find something else okay to replace that with go outside the classroom and um, I had a very very troublesome class once and we were learning um, verb conjugation and I could see the students were not interested um, it was a lot of you know noise here and there um, they don't really care very few are with the content so I made sure in the next lesson I had prepared some activity 
on the same thing topic that we could do outside and it was in the form of a game where you know if you got the right conjugation you ran to a certain corner uh to this uh, you know and it, it just made the class very happy i was able to work with them and they were able to understand the point is to meet your objective okay no matter how um or which method you use do not be very close-minded and you say this is how it is taught this is how it is done i will give them a worksheet they will fill it and that's the end of the story now be be very creative have games and and you don't always expect your school to buy the teaching materials or these kinds of games that you can use in class just buy them yourself because at the end of the day they're benefiting you and your students okay carry um any other things you might need sometimes you might even need to take things from your own house just to teach a certain concept in your class enjoy enjoy the class make sure you're having a happy classroom make sure every child is engaged and you'll be able to have control in that class okay but control is not always sit be quiet do this do that no control is in very many forms the whole point is are you meeting your objectives another point encourage good noise i know it sounds funny good noise um uh, i heard about this once in some insect some years back and you're left wondering what is good noise because you know noise noise pollution but it's something we've tried and i have tried in my lessons and it's not of course depending on what you're teaching you might not apply it every single day but good noise is when students are discussing when they are talking about something that is constructive so when you have good noise where let's say you have buzz groups have a group of let's say, two to three students and they're all coming up with something and this other group is here and they're all discussing this and and so on you might be having a debate and this one is raising their voice and then the next person comes and they are here presenting their case you know and, and that is noise but it's good noise you can have a scenario where students have, you know, they are throwing a ball to each other and they're so excited when something happens and they're like, yay, celebrating. That is good noise. When you have an activity that involves speed dating, um, so if you're watching this and you're not a teacher, speed dating is where you put students um, in two rows facing each other or, you know, they could be standing, they could be seated. And what happens is one row is left, um, you know, stagnant, but the other row actually moves. So if um, we are discussing one thing, let's say, what have you learned from today's lesson? So these two discuss, and then I ring a bell after, let's say, 30 seconds, then someone else comes to that seat, the next person, you move to I don't know, the left or the right, depending on how you have arranged your class and it's usually very loud very noisy anyone coming you know passing by would really want to know what's happening in that class but it's an amazing way of making sure that the students actually got what you were teaching and they had that you know space to express themselves and not just stay quiet the last thing i will mention is reduce your physical distance in class I know in this generation of child protection and safety, we want to create as much space from the students as possible, but it tends to work against the teacher because the moment you're very far away from your students, you're creating also emotional distance and they need to relate with you. If you're too far away, the message you're communicating is, I am the teacher, I am up here, and you guys are all the way there. But we want to remove that distance. And what you could do, look at how you have arranged your classroom. Um, in most of our classrooms, we have, you know, rows, 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 and every child is seated alone, or, you know, depending on how your desks look like. Um, could be even in twos, and so on. Um, I'd ask you to try, maybe arrange um, your class into squares so that you have four desks together four desks um, if you're even able to have a round table 
it, that's much better. That's mainly what I use where I have um, tables round and especially if it's a small class. Um, the table can have five people so if I have four students and myself that's that's okay but if I have a big class the big classes every group is there let's say on a square 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 and I as a teacher I'm able to go around and just deal with each group uh, and here you encourage the social forms of partner work or group work uh, which is an amazing tool. Remember what I just said, having good noise, okay? So just re try and remove that distance that, you know, most teachers tend to create in their classrooms. Stay close, go to this group, talk to them, see what they're discussing, be there with them, then move around. If you're marking books, just move around. Let it not be, you come leave your book on my desk, you stand over there, I finish marking, I give it to you, next person. That's traditional way, uh, the traditional way of teaching. We are way past that. We are 21st century teachers, and so we need to move with the times. And um, as a parting shot, um, there's a quote I read, and I don't remember it word for word, but the point is these students are sometimes looking for somebody to get close to. and the closest thing to an adult in their lives sometimes might not be their parents or their relatives it's the teacher because they tend to see the teacher more times than they even see their parents in in most cases actually so you're there with your students from morning till evening but their parents might only see them on weekends or when schools close because maybe they come home late the children are asleep they leave very early so you are the first point of contact with these students create a great a great rapport with them and you won't have to be shouting and punishing students all the time because you cannot manage them okay and that's